After making an app with lots of little yellow squares, I thought wouldn't it be fun to make an app with lots of pictures rather than little squares. So I came up with the idea of using the Flickr API to find some public pictures and then place them on the page much like we did with our yellow squares. Um, which requires us to do a few extra things. Now we're going to kind of use the same strategy. We're going to come up with an array of image elements and then just let React render that. But in order to do that, we have to actually call the API, which, you know, is a whole different ball of wax. So let's do that. When we call the API, we can make use of, we can make use of some of the functions that are part of the component lifecycle because the component does have a lifecycle and one of those uh, functions is component did mount now component did mount executes after the render so render is going to render whatever it does and that component did mount it's going to run so you might say to yourself well why are you going to get the pictures after it's rendered and I would say because it's going to take a little while for you to make a call to the API and get the pictures back and by the time you do that render is already going to run so it really doesn't matter if you do it before or after that's one reason and I think it's a good reason so I'm going to go with that so component did mount like I said this is part of the life cycle that's going to run and what we want to do is we want to fetch and we're going to fetch um, a JSON file using a REST API from Flickr. Now I'm not really going to go in detail in this video because I don't want to get bogged down in all the details but this is what that uh, call looks like. API, the Flickr API, REST and then you pass in a bunch of parameters, including an API key. Now, I didn't put my key here because I don't know if there's some nefarious uh, Bitcoin hacker who's going to steal my key and take over my Amazon account. But it's not really for security because anybody can see this um, get request go out and see what my key is. It's just mainly for coding reasons I'm not showing it here. Um, so we're going to make this call, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say next, I'm sorry, not next, that's silly, and then we're going to say then, so once that comes back, we're going to say function response, and response is what we're calling, it's just a name we give to whatever comes back from this fetch. So response And our function is going to return that response object. And then we're going to parse it, because we know it's a JSON file. So that's, so we're going to call the service. It's going to return a JSON file, which gets passed to this function, which parses it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that value that we get, that parsed out, we're going to call it anything we want. I don't have a good name, so I'm going to call it J. J is whatever came back from this. And what we're going to do with J is we're going to... So J is a bunch of... Here, let me show you what it looks like. I think I have it here. Yeah have it here. So this is what's coming back. Um, it's, uh, we have a photo and uh, we can see that this record has a bunch of properties but here a photo is an array of all these uh, records with IDs and owners and who knows what. So I'm going to uh, I could I have to iterate over this um, list uh, somehow. And so I'm going to use JavaScript's map function. 
So the way I do that is I say let the uh, pick array, because that's what I'm going to end up with, equal j dot photos. So this is the thing, photos, that's where that comes from. Dot photo. That's where this is where that comes from. That takes us to our list of records. Dot map. So each record we'll just call pick and with that uh oh where did I just click on? Oh, I just scroll down. And with that, um, what I want to do is I want to derive the source path of that photo because if you look at this, there is no path. There's, it's just a bunch of uh, stuff that we have to piece together. And the way you piece it together, um, this is in Flickr's documentation. I'm not really going to give the details here, but I'll first path equals, and I'm going to copy and paste this. So you can see that um, I'm using this record. It's got a farm. It's got a server ID, a regular ID, a secret ID, whatever these things are, I don't know. But when you paste it all together, it creates um, the location of the um, location of the picture. Now we've done that. So how do we close this out? Oh, I don't have to. Now, um, we've so we've uh, let's see what we've done. We've we have, we're in the middle of this function. We took the res the parse JSON and we're mapping it to here so that we can build a path, and then we have to return the element that we built from this image, an image element, alt. Um, I think these are pictures of dogs, so I'm going to say dogs. Uh, the source is what we just did there, the source path. And image, oops. And then close that. all these things up. Huh, why does this a bracket is expected? Oh yeah, you need that for sure. So that ends with there. And then we need the bracket. And then This isn't really going to do anything, because I'm not, I'm kind of building this array, but I'm not doing anything with it, but let's save it and run it and see what happens. Expected a Unicode. Where? this all about. Let's try that again. Okay, so it didn't blow up, but it didn't do anything either. So what do we do once we have this picture array? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it as a value within this component. And if you want to store the state of a component, you have to make a constructor. So this is different than what we did last time. We didn't really need a constructor automatically have to call super and then to make a state you just say this dot state equals some object in this case I'm gonna call it pictures and pictures if I use the right syntax is going to
to be an array. Okay. Now, I have a state that's empty array, so how do I get this value into that state? Well, after I got the source path, After I'm done with this function, then I call render. Render. Return. Oh, my mistake. I don't have to do that at all. Once I have once I I do have to set the state though that's what I have to do I have to set the state so the state is going to be let's see where does this crazy function end here so now set this dot set state and I want to set the pictures to pick array. And I have to do this properly. I have to use curly braces. Oops, not zeros. So once I map everything to the pick array, then I set that value to there. And then down here, I just put in this dot state dot pictures. Oops. Dot pictures. And it should work. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Pick array is not defined in line 27. That's true, pick array is not defined. Hmm. Because pick array was defined here. So what if we put after the mapping is done, where is the mapping done? Here's where the mapping starts, that's where the mapping is done. So let's put it here. Hey. It kind of did it kind of worked. Um but it didn't render anything. I don't see any pictures of dogs. So let's find out if we actually return something from here. At this point um, at this point, J should, J should hold the values, so let's try to see. Let's say alert JSON dot stringify J. Save that and see if we get. Okay, so we know that J. So we're kind of successful. J did bring back all this information. Um, oh, you know what's going on, I bet. This has to do with callbacks and binding. And I bet that we're losing the context in this. So let me add something here. Because this is the function. Hmm. This 
is a function. So I'm going to do this without really explaining what I'm doing. And if it works, that would be awesome. And then I can go on to explain it. Haha, mm -hmm. <laughs> see, it did work. Except those aren't dogs. Those are cats. Uh, why are they cats? Oh, because I asked for cats. Let's change it to dogs. Yeah, we can get rid of that, huh? Aw, oh, cute. Dogs. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I know that I glossed over a whole lot of things. Let's get rid of uh, this alert here. Um, why did we have to bind this? Because um, this function, within a function, um, it doesn't know what this is. It thinks that this is the uh, global scope and not the, it's not bound to this component. So by adding bind at this, you bind to this function to the component. It's a very confusing thing. Um, I'll probably have to make a whole video just about that. Uh, just for last, let's do one more. Let's do, uh, um, I don't know, New York City. How much fun is that? Okay, I think we're set up to do more fun things in the future. So I'm going to end the video there.